Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Welcome, everybody, to our brand new podcast series called Data Movers. I'm your host, Jamie Scott Pattaya, CEO of JSA, and along with me, my co host, my friend, top B2B social media influencer, Mr. Evan Christel. Hey, Evan. Hey, good to see you. Welcome everyone. Uh, Data Movers is where we sit down with the most influential men and women in the telecom and data center world, uh, delivering the requirements of our modern world and the new normal. Jamie, how are you doing? How are things on the uh, vaccine front? It's pretty exciting. I just got shot number two, Pfizer. Um, yesterday, yesterday afternoon, so actually I was sending a note around to everybody. I think I'll be totally fine for tomorrow morning, but just in case. Um, but uh, no, I feel good. It was actually, um, you know, second shot. Is, we're hearing that it's, it's usually the one that comes with the flu-like symptoms, but I, I'm feeling really good. And now the world is my oyster, right? Great. Speaking yeah. of oysters, I've just, I've just had my third shot. <laughs> because it's Friday and I'm I'm drinking, but no. In all seriousness, I've I've had my second shot and uh, I'm a few weeks in, so I am allegedly immune and I can go back to nightclubbing. Yeah, I was going to say, have you done anything that uh, no, you previously ab felt absolutely, like, just still? absolutely nothing. Yep, still at home. So, <laughs> I kind but of we do have a guest who's also at home, so I think maybe we could chat chat with him. Yes, that is bring in our amazing guest, a good friend, longtime friend of mine, actually. Um, so let's welcome Mr. Ben Edmond, of course, the founder and CEO of Connected to Fiber. Ben, welcome, Great. welcome, welcome. Welcome to you. I appreciate the invite and uh, glad to be here with you and Evan today. Thanks, and Ben. And we, we, we know each other actually going back a bit and both in Massachusetts. Here. So this is going to be the, the special Massachusetts edition bring of it Data on. Movers. Right. So what, what is so great about why, why are we the best state in the union in Massachusetts, Ben? To, sh share your thoughts there oh, with us. Man. So many reasons. Uh, great seafood, uh, great institutions, uh, a fantastic place to live. And, uh, and the sports is pretty amazing as well. And a million Dunkin' Donuts. So there you go. Every day. Every day. Uh, it wasn't Dunkin' Donuts, Rhode Island? No, it was uh, founded in Massachusetts. Oh, see, when you're a Rhode Islander, everything's founded in Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> but I did go to Tufts, so um, yeah, Medford, Somerville, you know. Um, so big, big, big heart, love for uh, our Massachusetts family. Um, so let's talk about, you know, it's, uh, it's towards the end of April now, 2021, and uh, we just passed the one-year anniversary when COVID really first hit the U.S. last year, well, March, March 2020 time. How has Connected to Fiber really managed through it all? I mean, it was a profound change, the way that we do business. Um, obviously, the need to connect, the need for telecom, never, never greater uh, in many, many ways. What impact has it had on your current and future strategies? as a critical resource in our in our network broadband buying selling ecosystem it's you know really had a pr pretty profound impact i mean from a company perspective you know we immediately just um, started a uh, a, a really a perspective around how do we keep our employees safe you know let's enable them to work from home let's get them the tools and you know we we have an advantage over other companies. We're a software company in the connectivity industry. If we can't figure it out, you know, no one can. So, you know, right away we we had everyone working from home. We had the collaboration tools in place. Uh, we had the communications. We do a weekly all hands call to keep transparent, keep people engaged. Um, good things, bad things, just you know, uh, talking and being transparent and open about it really helps through any situation. And that's exactly what we did. And what we found though is, you know, this whole situation, uh, a massive pandemic, you know, helped everyone outside the industry understand what is so important that we do on a daily basis. You know, the, the connected world is really this enablement engine of the whole digital, you know, way of life. You know, how we live, 
how we entertain, how we work, how we learn, how we govern our societies is all being impacted by this digital economy. And none of it works without connectivity. And to understand that, you know, is part of our DNA to help you know bring that to life. You know, the software platforms that we build, you know, we've seen a massive increase in demand, you know, on top of you know, really strong demand that we already had. You know, that demand continues to to elevate and uh, gives us an opportunity to, to grow, which is exactly over what we've been doing over the last 12 months. That's fantastic. And Ben, connected to fiber. You just uh, announced a $12 million Series B round, so congratulations. Thank you. And uh, just remember the little people on your, on your way <laughs> up, like myself. Um, so is that funding earmarked for something special, maybe a company jet or a shiny new headquarters, or what, what are you thinking? Well, if anyone knows me, it's probably not going to involve a company jet or a fancy new headquarters. What it will involve is an investment in uh, us as a company to support our customers and, and really focuses on three core elements of it. Uh, we're going to continue the aggressive build out of our platform. Our roadmap is, you know, aggressive and our ambitions are pretty, uh, pretty bold. You know, we want to be that industry cloud that helps the ecosystem automate how buying and selling a connectivity happens, you know, from each of the service providers own unique perspectives. And so there's aspects of the platform that, uh, that we're going to continue to invest in, grow the capabilities and expand the use cases. The second investments really, how do we tell that bigger story? How do we show more people? How do we expand the go-to-market effort so we can build this ecosystem bigger and bigger and bigger? Um, so we're going to invest in our sales and marketing. We're going to invest in our customer success. We're going to invest in our implementation teams that support that bigger thought process. And then the third aspect is really, you know, investing in data science. So it's one thing to have data. It's another thing to move it around with workflow. And it's a third element to really extract insights and drive automation with intent and that's what exactly what we're going to you know start leveraging our capabilities around being able to predict demand so you can allocate sales and marketing resources to the most effective locations being able to understand optimal packages or pricing not just automate what is but you know look at the context of the data flows and enable our customers to take advantage of that and you know those three things you know we're going to uh, actively invest in for our customers. Yeah. And, uh, and for sure, the, the work and, and the growth that you've even done to date, it's am amazing. And I can just imagine what this new investment um, is, is going, the impact is going to be amazing. Um, when I think about connected to fiber, the word ecosystem really pops into my mind a lot. We, you know, and, and yeah, in this industry, we hear a lot of ecosystem talk, right? Um, so let's let's define ecosystem as it relates to partnership support, the connected to fiber ecosystem. How, how does it work? Sure. Um, you know, the ecosystem we operate in is fairly complex, as you guys probably already know. Uh, lots of different layers, lots of different, you know, components to make connectivity work end to end. You have data center operators, you have fiber operators, you have managed service providers, cloud companies, all these different entities orchestrating, you know, from right away up through the application layer. Where we play a role in is helping to establish digital blueprints. So if you think about connectivity, it starts with physical reality of you got to connect things together. Understanding who has what where putting it in a digital format, associating it to a location level, whether it's your own locations you've already physically built fiber to, it's something you could deploy capital to reach, or a location that you're reaching through a third party relationship across the ecosystem, it needs a digital record. So we establish that as a starting point and help you create that network fabric from your own service provider point of view. Ultimately, those third-party relationships with the service provider is a core part of our ecosystem. How do we connect through APIs, buyers and sellers within the service provider community together so when people are trying to respond to an RFP, 
uh, transact with the, the next price quote, they can do so not just with their internal capabilities, but reaching across their partners with real-time intelligence around, this is where I can serve, this is what products are available, and this is the pricing that I can buy that connectivity from. And what that does is when that ecosystem continues to build greater and greater, it allows us to automate more of that digital blueprint in real time, creating a better experience. And we often associate it to the cloud companies that are you know, ultimately influencing a lot of our ecosystem and a part of it where you can go into Azure, click a button, spin up a new VM, get a new application set up in really seconds or minutes. And then the traditional experience of waiting for connectivity to be installed 90 days later doesn't associate it. Our ecosystem is being enabled to operate in that real-time API economy to integrate into the user experience. And when we think of a ecosystem and what we're building, we're building that physical layer to operate seamlessly across the different parties and embed with the service providers consuming those resources, whether they own them or they're buying them, so they can have a customer experience similar to and integrate with the cloud community. And that, that's really where we're building to and think that the, the whole market's pushing towards this seamless ecosystem where people can interoperate across cloud, across physical network, across the services that are being delivered, whether it's UCAS, security, internet, private WAN, doesn't matter. It's ultimately about reducing that friction and allowing people to have the best experience possible. Wow, that, that's phenomenal. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, well, one thing that's become pretty evident through the pandemic is the digital divide. I mean, not just socioeconomically, but even between metro and, and suburban areas and, and rural America. And one of the things the proposed Biden $2 trillion infrastructure spending bill does is set aside $100 billion to really close that digital divide you know, in, in rural America with broadband services. Um, what are you guys doing to kind of think about you know, empowering uh, providers and, and really the country to, to, to extend the reach of broadband intelligently, you know, into these rural areas? Great, great question. And, you know, we're doing some super important things that, you know, accelerate and improve that digital divide, you know, uh, battle that's going on today to, to help uh, the reality that, you know, people everywhere need access to the right connectivity to, you know, live and thrive in today's economy. Um, it's not just about, you know, getting Netflix at your house. It's about, I wanna work wherever I can and want to be and participate in this digital economy. And they need the right connectivity to enable that environment. So our creation of a digital blueprint for service providers helps them identify a starting point. This is accurately where you physically can serve. This is where I need to deploy capital that's not being served. This is the context around the other connectivity that's currently available. So I know where I should spend my resources most effectively. And that transparency of the market, you know, which is happening already in our ecosystem as service providers share with other service providers, we're in a position to help those service providers share transparently back with the government. And, uh, you know, government policy was more you know, area based around the census tracts previously because they picked that policy. Ultimately, what we enable the service providers do is to adapt the new policy around precision reporting that aligns to the deployment of more capital to expand the reach and serve the community. But in addition to that transparency, it's really about enabling, you know, a digital toolkit across your organization. So, the, the data, the analytics, the workflow that we power can be shared to other systems, other GIS systems, engineering systems, provisioning systems, making the whole process more efficient to actually get that network built, deliver for the customer. And then the, the third aspect where we have an impact is 
in rural America where that digital divide exists, it's not just about direct selling and supporting the local community. That's important, but it's also about enabling the wholesale ecosystem because we need each other to execute. So if there's a Walmart or a Starbucks in that rural community, more than likely the local infrastructure provider, whether it's a municipal network, a broadband provider, telephone company, a cable company, they're not gonna sell it directly. They're gonna sell that connectivity back up through the ecosystem to the service providers that have the national relationships. And unlocking the friction there improves the return on capital, accelerates project deployment, and improves the actual you know, facilitation of more connectivity in and around those locations. I just love it. Love it, makes total sense. And uh, I'm, I'm just so glad someone with your expertise is, is on it to do this because it, it needs to be done. And talking about your expertise, um, you know, I, I've been friends with you for, for many years um, and to watch you grow uh, as we grew together up in this industry has been wonderful. Um, um, now, um, you founded Connected to Fiber about, what, six years ago, yep. um, and worked with other companies like Frontier, MCI, Time Warner Telecom, of course, FiberLite. Um, what caused you to branch out and develop what's now the industry cloud for connectivity? Yeah, it, it was really a, a passion to solve something for the industry. You know, I've lived in this industry since I walked out of undergraduate school. Um, MCI recruited me, you know, went to work there, and I've never left the industry. And what I've recognized along that journey is you know, a lot of friction points, a lot of, you know, challenges that we've had to manually overcome. We've had to piece the solutions together to try to help, you know, the service providers that I was part of grow effectively. And, you know, it didn't always create a optimal customer experience in the process either. So even if we could get the job done, it wasn't a you know beautiful masterpiece of instant answers and and reduced friction. And what I wanted to do is solve for that. Um, I believe that there was a need. You know, the the industry needed transparency because it relied on each other. And you know, building fiber at uh, at Fiberlite gave me that perspective of you know location matters. You know, that infrastructure and capital intensity. You know, the, the experience at Global Capacity or MCI gave me that broad perspective of, you know, needing other people to finish the end result for multi-location customers. And the experience at, uh, at, at Expedia and Time Warner Telecom really, you know, shined a light of this, you know, infrastructure plus ecosystem at the LEC level. I mean, it, it all matters. And there was friction across every one of those steps. So I wanted to invest and really take the opportunity to go and solve something that I thought could, you know, really transform the industry. Indeed, and it needs transforming because in my humble opinion, the telecom broadband business market does a terrible job at understanding its business uh, customers, locations and network. So my words, not yours, but that, <laughs> that's my perspective. And now you're, you're really helping and, and supporting really who's who in the industry, the top MSOs, the top fiber providers, you've gotten very high satisfaction and retention rates. I'm reading here on G2 Crowd, you have five stars, which is no small achievement. You've even grown 108% over the past year in particular. So what's your secret sauce? Like what's the, you know, what's been your secret to success, particularly lately? Yeah, I think, uh, I think you know, three things stand out, you know, one is a culture of customer centricity. I mean, ultimately we're here for a particular industry that we know uh, we've lived in it, we've walked in these shoes and every step of the software, the data, the process, the engagement is thinking about how do we get our customers to value? And just that, that mindset is not gonna change has been with us from day one. And I think that brings a certain amount of execution to the table instead of us trying to you know, be a location system for everyone or being a pricing engine for everyone, it, that's not our mission. Our mission is to really help the service provider community, you know, transform and create value. I think number two is hiring great people. Uh, ultimately, the, the code doesn't build itself. The data doesn't uh, curate itself. The customers don't get implemented or sold themselves. 
you got to have the right people and the the team in place and create that culture for success. And we've been fortunate to uh, to build a great culture, have the right people that that care, uh, that want to deliver quality, and and want to uh, to take the vision to the next step. And I, and I think third is you know this element of you know we're actually solving something that needed to be solved. You know, the, the need was clearly there. Early on, we've identified fit that, that we're solving something that, you know, the largest providers in the world are our customers today for a reason because they needed something solved and we're actually solving it in a way that reduces friction, adds value, creates a better customer experience, and it allows us to continue to extend that. It serves as a platform that we then continue to introduce new ways to, to add value to. And by delivering it, we, uh, we ultimately you know, get to, uh, to keep winning. So knowing what you know now, if you could take a, a time machine back into time and go and like whisper to Ben Edmond, fresh out of college, about to be recruited into MCI, what would you tell yourself? What piece of advice would you give yourself? Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, I think I would tell myself to become a, uh, a product manager uh, earlier than I did. I think that was uh, transformative to my personal career to you know, think about the customer, but in terms of how things work and what the economics of you know, making money and the cost drivers of it that you know, gave me a different lens as I left that role into leading sales and marketing organizations to, to really think through. It's not just about you know, the cost. It's not just about the price. It's not just about the customer. It's the orchestration of all three of those things to create value in the marketplace and for yourself. I think the, the second thing I would uh, probably tell myself is uh, you know, do it faster. You know, I, I should have you know, started this company five years before I, I did it. Um, there was a need then, there was a need in the 90s, there was a need in the 2000s, there's a need now. And ultimately, it just took the, the courage to, you know, uh, stop my uh, nice job and, uh, and, you know, go for it. And uh, that's what I did. Amazing. That's great. I, I would tell my younger self to buy Bitcoin, but that, that, that's... <laughs> that was coming. Buy Amazon, buy Bitcoin, buy Microsoft, yes. buy Apple. Yeah. Exactly. I stupid. That. I was so stupid. But... Um, <laughs> So in all seriousness, so we, we're returning in the U.S. at least to some kind of new normal. We don't know what that will look like, but we know that the trend towards digital transformation won't slow up. We know the hunger for, for broadband is, uh, you know, incessant. So what will the industry look like from your perspective in a year or two out? Oh, I think uh, the industry is going through massive change um, right now, and that trend is going to continue over the next couple of years where uh, new actors are going to be participating in our industry for the first time. Uh, there'll be significant consolidation uh, that continues in the industry to counterbalance those new actors. Uh, the access medium will become somewhat blurred. Uh, meaning that 5G with wireless, uh, the access to fiber, and even the advances of coax will create this you know, broader spectrum of ubiquitous connectivity infrastructure that is being leveraged to deliver you know, the experiences that we care about across all aspects of our life. I think the, the reality that will set in, you know, in my humble view in a couple of years though, is that you know, purposefulness in that connectivity will matter more than everything. So the move to the edge is being done for a reason. You know, latency, control, uh, the private SLAs associated with that, you know, in tomorrow's reality of use cases of augmented reality, driverless cars. I mean, driverless cars, just think about it. If it's, you know, relying on connectivity to stop your car, you want to make sure that that happens. Um, and our infrastructure and our connectivity fabric is not perfectly aligned to that today. Over the next uh, few years, you're going to see that execute and it is going to transform not just the driverless cars, but it's how we access Salesforce and Azure and all the different things that power the productivity of the business from an office, from home, from a mobile place, 
you know, seamlessly. And that seamless nature with the analytics to make sure it's executing, you know, is going to change our economy. Yeah, for sure. You know, I wrote down purposefulness and connectivity because I think that's, that's a whole nother blog, that's a whole nother, you know, interview because uh, it's, it's critical and you're right. It's economical changing, shifting. It's, it is. It's, uh, uh, it's everything. It's tomorrow. Um, and, um, and, you know, you, you have a great seat, my friend, uh, right in that, that driver's seat uh, for sure. Um, all right, so we come to the rapid fire section of our podcast, which I love. It's kind of fun. Um, so tell us the very first thing that comes to your mind when we ask you these wacky questions. Um, my question first, if you could have a lunch with a famous person in history, who would it be and why? Oh, geez, I guess I would have lunch with uh, uh, Thomas uh, Edison and uh, and just because of, you know, his creative, you know, desire to uh, build, invent, and change the world on a constant basis, whether he pa uh, failed or succeeded, you know, uh, pretty inspiring of you know, what he did uh, and what he created. But he, he would probably make you buy lunch too, so that would be interesting. <laughs> he probably would, that's correct, yeah. and I'd be happy to. Dunkin' Donuts is serving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's on your iPhone home screen or your Android home screen? What are your, what are your, your top apps? Maybe you can even hold uh, the it, phone up and show it us. Is, it is an Android, not an iPhone. Uh, I am a Samsung, uh, Samsung fan and I love it. Um, I have uh, Slack uh, is one of those. Uh, I, I live and, uh, and interact constantly uh, with it uh, from my phone. Uh, Outlook, of course, you know, email uh, still uh, rules the, the day and is an important part of the tool. Ring Central is my unified communication, so that's right up there. Uh, Google um, to search and find and uh, all work no play. Come on, this is uh, I am a pretty boring guy when it comes to that. <laughs> so, you know, I love what I do, so that, that that tends to dominate my world. And there's a picture of uh, Susie and the boys, so that uh, that that rounds it out. Oh, for me. nice! Oh, nice. I love it. And and Ring Central, by the way, they should. I feel like we should get them to advertise here. It's yeah, good, there you good go. Job for them. They did a good job for me. <laughs> And what is your favorite hobby or pastime when you're able to break away from, um, again, all this work? Yeah, so spending time with, uh, with my family. Um, so whether, uh, whether that means it's a, uh, a trip somewhere or just in the backyard uh, or going to the lake. Uh, but uh, two boys, uh, 13 and almost 15, and uh, my wife of, uh, she's going on uh, 24 years now. Uh, we, we love to spend time together. and. Happy to do it anywhere we you know, and where we can. Love that answer. Nice, nice. Now, besides uh, data movers, what's your favorite podcast? <laughs> tough question. Uh, that or, is bo tough or book, or book, or book, or movie. If you're not a big <laughs> podcast am, uh, uh, junkie. Yeah, I'm a uh, uh, an espionage, mind candy, audible listener that uh, allows Ooh. me to uh, enjoy. So anything with a uh, you know a born. Uh, Jason Bourne like theme I will listen to and uh, and love. Oh, I'm, I have I'm a couple of suggestions I, I'll send you on uh, on audio that. listening, interview CIA spies and you know Cold War stories and that kind of thing. It's a good listen. And uh, that wraps up our our fabulous uh, session here with our uh, amazing Ben Edmund, CEO and founder again of Connected to Fiber. Thank you so much for your insight and uh, and perspective, and just be you, be you, you know, and, and all that you're doing for our industry. We really greatly appreciate you, Ben. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time today. And guys, if you enjoyed uh, today's Data Movers podcast as much as I did, please be sure to check us out at jsa.net slash podcasts for upcoming Data Movers episodes, releasing every other Wednesday morning. So check us out there as well. Yeah, and just, just a, a footnote, it was so great to hear an entrepreneur story that wasn't about some app from Silicon Valley or some hype, a practical, you know, useful utilitarian sort of startup and it just goes to show entrepreneurism is alive and well in every industry, every facet of what we do. So 
so yeah, great, great to uh, to hear Ben's story and be sure to continue the discussion on Twitter at Evan Kerstell and Jay Scotto and we'll we'll carry on there. And as always, guys, stay safe and happy networking.